Welcome to Mystic Realms Recap. Links are in the description below. Please show some love of the author and me. On to the show. Before I knew it, another month had passed. Sitting in the center of the pitch black beam of light, Sumu helplessly looked at the system prompt that was refreshed on his attribute panel. You have absorbed the pure breath of death. You have absorbed the pure dark breath. You understand. Your body is stronger. From the very beginning, a large amount of information has been refreshed every moment, suggesting that his body has been strengthened, and his four-dimensional attributes have increased. Now, after a large number of reminders of absorbing the breath of death and the breath of darkness, will be refreshed message notification and there is no stat point increase prompt. Like the erosion talent, it absorbs the attribute value the fastest at the beginning, and absorbs less and less as it goes, until the animus bones no longer have any effect on him. The same is true for the jet black beam of light. Today, a month later, even though he is still bathed in the most intense aura of death and darkness, it is difficult for his body to increase in strength because the strength of his body has exceeded the upper limit that the breath of death and the breath of darkness in the jet black beam of light can enhance. Now, sitting in this pitch black beam of light, the almost endless aura of death and darkness is still washing over his body, but for days, months, or even years, it was enough to destroy his armor. The breath of death and the breath of darkness could hardly shake him at all. The effect of the jet black beam of light reaches its limit. That means it's time for Sumu to get out of here. He glanced at his current attribute panel. Before the advancement, Sumu, who had endured the scouring of the jet black light column for half a month, had achieved a leap forward improvement in its four-dimensional properties. After transferring to Death Sovereign, 01 Advanced Epic, the attribute bonus brought by the level increase, plus the four-dimensional attribute improvement that Sumu, later obtained more than a month later. Three full leaps. It makes his four-dimensional attributes now several times higher than before. Name, King of Bones, Sumu, Race, Undead Race, Skeleton, Template, Epic Occupation Template, Death Monarch, Level, Level 58, Status, Life 920,000, Magic 530,000, Attributes, Strength 46,000, Agility 34,000, Constitution 42,000, Spirit 28,000, Talent, Erosion, the only talent, skills, death slash, boss skill, sky smash, boss skill, face shift, boss skill, summon skeleton, boss skill, imprisoned hand, boss skill, death halo, fear halo, death mark, undead transformation, level 2, ice skills, omitted, free points, 28 points, about to exceed 1 million health points, and 4 dimensional attributes, that are all calculated in 10,000, plus that incomparably gorgeous skill bar. At this time, Su Mu doesn't look like an epic monster boss at all. This kind of BT attribute, these BT skills also make Su Mu in the epic rank, and already initially has the prototype of the strongest boss in history. The jet black beam of light could no longer enhance Su Mu's four-dimensional attributes, which meant that his current physical strength had caught up with Ghost Dragon, the existence at the pinnacle of the entire continent. It also means, unless you kill a powerful monster boss like the Ghost Dragon, after killing other enemies, the ability of the erosion talent to absorb attribute values is temporarily useless because the essence in the animus body is far from enough for Sumu to continue to improve his four dimensional attributes and physical strength. In addition, the explosion of four dimensional attributes brought about the enhancement of skeleton armor and skeleton armor. The quality of the skeleton sword has been increased from epic to legendary, and as the breath of death and the breath of darkness merged into the body, these two kinds of damage were automatically contained in the skeleton sword. That is to say, from now on, even if Sumu uses the skeleton moblade to attack normally, or releases the pure physical attack skill of death cutting, these attacks also bring damage from the two attributes of death and darkness. It's like enchanting the skeleton sword. The quality of bone armor has also been upgraded to legendary quality but, at this time, the skeleton armor has more than the physical defense capabilities of legendary quality armor. When Sumu advanced, the magic pattern that covered the skeleton armor and gradually disappeared, made this heavy armor also have a good reputation. Magic defense ability, although it is not as powerful as physical defense, it is quite impressive. The four-dimensional attributes of the explosion plus the number of luxurious skills, plus the legendary quality of bone armament and bone armor, the above all add up, combined with Sumu's own fighting skills. This is the full strength of Sumu today. Call, let out a long breath. After closing the attribute panel, and taking a last look at the place where he had been for more than a month, Sumu stood up and walked out of the beam of light unhurriedly. More than a month is not a short time. For the natives, they may have found a better job, hunted a powerful monster, 
or ended a war. For the players, they may have completed the leap from the apprentice rank to the formal rank. For the undead, time is meaningless. This more than one month is not enough for a skeleton bathed in the breath of death to raise a level, not enough for a spirit of pain advanced epic, who has just ascended the position of the leader, not enough for Argus to complete an experiment, and not enough for Nefarian take a nap. The ghost dragon did not fall asleep. When Sumu retreated and broke through in its original position, this ghost dragon rarely abides by its agreement with Sumu, and conscientiously stays on the altar to protect Sumu even if, on the second day of Sumu's retreat, Argus, who was helpless but had nowhere to go, left the altar and devoted his anger and energy to a new round of research and experiments. More than a month is only enough for the ghost dragon to take a nap. It doesn't have much opinion on Sumus one-off retreat for such a long time, but feels that this is the normal state of the undead family. Anyway, even if it sleeps in the center of the beam of light, the improvement that can be obtained in more than a month is very small. At the level of the ghost dragon, the impact of external forces on the improvement of strength has been minimal even the dark beam of light so. That's why it values Sumu so much so. That's why it pays so much attention to the so-called talent that Sumu made up to help others improve their rank. This day, Nefarian yawned as usual, glanced casually at Agnes and the dark beam of light, and prepared to continue taking a nap. The month of Sumu's retreat was also the month of Agnes' retreat. Looking at the petite figure, whose whole body was shrouded in the knight's armor, even Nefarian couldn't help but secretly admire it. Same as the original Sumu, clearly unable to withstand the impact of the jet black beam of light. Agnes stepped into the beam of light again and again, and would not leave until her body nearly collapsed due to the violent aura of death and darkness. After repairing her body, she will step into it again, and continue to bear the impact of the jet black beam of light at this point. In the entire city of the dead, only Sumu and Agnes can do it. The body of the undead does not feel pain, but the gradual collapse of the body affects the soul fire, that is the basis of the undead. The soul fire is shaken, and it brings pain no less than the soul being torn apart. It can be said, if there is no strong enough will, when the jet black beam of light continuously impacts the body of the undead, when the body gradually collapses, the soul fire of the undead will gradually dissipate, and the body will die. At the beginning, Sumu endured this kind of pain and persevered little by little, and now Agnes is also enduring this kind of pain and persevered little by little. With patience and perseverance, even though the strength gap between the two is huge, Agnes has won the respect of the ghost dragon. It can even be sure that, as long as it doesn't fall in the middle, Agnes, who has such patience and persistence, will definitely grow into a tyrannical existence comparable to it. That little skeleton was the first. This little knight is the second. It seems that this little knight is still dominated by that little skeleton. When the little skeleton is advanced to the legend, and helps this king to break through the upper limit of the legendary rank. This king will take this little skeleton, and a little knight as servants. At that time, the old and immortal people, who watched Long Island would dare to chase and kill this king. Dreaming happily in his heart, Nefarian once again casually glanced at the jet black beam of light, ready to sleep only. It suddenly saw the originally stable beam of light fluctuate. Immediately after, a vague figure gradually became clear, and walked out from the dark beam of light. The little skeleton is out. This was Nefarian's first 450 response sheet. How did the little skeleton become so strong? This was Nefarian's second reaction. The soul fire kept jumping in the huge eye sockets, and Nefarian stared at the not tall figure slowly walking out from the dark beam of light from blurred to clear. A strong aura emanated from this figure. Although it was only a trace, it made Nefarian feel a threat. Nefarian was shocked. Who is it? The monster boss ghost dragon at the pinnacle of the legendary rank, the existence standing at the pinnacle of the entire continent, except for a group of old guys in the Dragon Island, the Book of Light, the sacred artifact inscribed with multiple forbidden spells, and the Argus a legendary boss with countless hole cards, what else can threaten it in the entire continent? Now, Nefarian felt this threat on a little skeleton, who had just stepped into the epic stage, not just Nefarian, when Sumu walked out of the dark beam of light and the breath leaked from his body, Argus, who had already returned to the mage tower, appeared again, standing beside Nefarian, staring at Sumu, who had completely stepped out of the dark beam of light. Argus is shocked. If Nefarian just felt a slight threat, it means that Sumu now has the strength to fight against it. What Argus feels is a strong crisis, creating the city of the undead, the base camp that he has been operating for countless years. Argus has a feeling that if he faces Sumu in other places, even if he has all his cards, he may not be able to defeat this skeleton. Even in this city of the undead, it has become unknown whether he can kill this skeleton that has entered the epic rank over a month. One of his experiments has not yet been completed. This little skeleton, which was not in his eyes at the beginning, 
has quietly grown up and has become a powerful existence that can rival or even surpass him. Argus was in a complicated mood. The anger in his heart disappeared quietly. Since then, this city of the dead is no longer his and Nefarian's world. A powerful undead not weaker than them has grown up. Your Excellency Argus, Lord Nefarian, good day. Walking out of the dark beam of light, Sumu greeted Argus and Nefarian who were coming. He has a clearer understanding of his current strength. In the face of Nefarian, he already had the strength to fight. Although it is unlikely to win, the result of the battle must be that this ghost dragon is full of scars. And after using up the magic value and physical value, he left unscathed. Facing Argus, if it is outside the city of the dead, Sumu has absolute certainty to kill him. Even in this city of the dead, Sumu can remain undefeated against Argus, who has countless trump cards. This is his current strength. It is precisely because of this strength that Sumu has been able to face Argus and Nefarian peacefully and talk to them on an equal footing. Equal dialogue has always been based on equal strength. Before that, Nefarian did protect Sumu, but at that time it was based on the premise that Nefarian wanted Sumu's talent to help him break through the rank. Now, if you still believe Sumu's lies, the only thing it can do is to form an alliance with Sumu. The same goes for Argus. When Sumu was still a lord, Argus was furious because Sumu challenged the rules he set and was ready to attack him. And now, even if the city of the undead was established by Argus, if Sumu does the same thing, what he has to face is only Argus' confrontation to maintain his own rules, not punishment. Your Excellency Sumu, congratulations on your advanced epic. It turns out that it is true that Your Excellency needs the information of the Wailing Banshee and stitching monster to evolve. In this case, the previous matter has been written off. Feeling a little complicated, Argus found himself a step down, saying that he would not pursue the previous matters, and also expressed his respect for this new giant. Nefarian didn't care so much. Appearing in front of Su Mu, the ghost dragon asked eagerly, Su Mu, you have advanced to the epic. What are the conditions for breaking through the legend? When can you help this king strengthen W? Su Mu already had enough strength and Nefarian's plan to take him as a servant naturally went bankrupt but, as long as they are not hostile, Nefarian still hopes to get the help of Sumu to break through the upper limit of the legendary rank. As you can see, Sumu spread his hands, and said, I've already used my talent to improve my strength, and I'm afraid I won't be able to use my talent anymore in a short time. As for the conditions for breaking through the legend, is it similar to the epic rank? Nefarian regretted it. Sumu was reluctant to use his talent to improve it. It might be a shirk, or it might really be like what he said. The advanced talent has already been used to improve his strength, and he can no longer use it in a short time. Nefarian prefers the latter, because only this reason can explain why Sumu's strength has skyrocketed to such a terrifying level just after breaking through the epic rank. Nefarian was a little pity, but not annoyed. Their agreement was that Sumu would help him only after he stepped into the legendary rank, and the talent consumption of the epic rank is not included in this list. Besides, today's Sumu is not something that can be forced at will. Hearing Sumu's words, Nefarian was just a pity, but Argus was shocked. He already knew that Sumu's advancement required information about the undead of other races. When Sumu was in retreat, Nefarian used this excuse to bully this honest man. Now it seems that this is really the advanced way of Sumu. Advanced epic requires information about other epic undead then advanced legend needs information about other legendary undead. To know, the entire city of the undead can only be himself and Nefarian, the two legendary undeads. The ghost dragon is a different species of the undead and cannot become a race. In other words, the Lich King is likely to be the target that Sumu needs to kill next time. In addition, Argus already knew why Nefarian protected Sumu. He and Nefarian are just a partnership. When an enemy strikes, Nefarian helps him defend against the enemy and protect the city of the dead. If Nefarian's enemy comes, he also has the responsibility to help Nefarian now. A second helper appeared. If Nefarian really wanted to let Sumu help him break through the ranks and turn to help Sumu to obtain the so-called relevant information about him, the Lich King, wouldn't he be cold? With his trump card in the city of the undead, Argus is sure to suppress either Nefarian or Sumu. If they join forces, Argus has foreseen his end. At this time, Argus was extremely sad in his heart. He is just a mage who likes to do research. In order to have more time and energy to devote himself to research, he changed his job to become a big lich and stepped into the ranks of the lich king step by step over a long period of time. He created the city of the undead, sheltered the undead, and restrained the undead not to set foot in the human world. The city of the undead is located in the mountains, but there are people from the holy light camp who come from thousands of miles to attack. After finally driving away the people from the holy light camp, Sumu, the Calamity Star, appeared again. This time, 
Not only is the city of the dead that he worked so hard to create in danger, but even he himself may become the hunting target of Sumu and Nefarian. Argus' heart was very sad. He just wants to do research quietly. Why let him go through this? But, information on the Lich King, desperately flipping through his huge memory. Argus was silent for a while, then suddenly asked, Dare to ask your excellency Sumu, do you just need information about the legendary undead, or do you need to kill it yourself? Suma's answer will be directly related to Argus' safety. If it is the former, Argus still has room to maneuver. If it is the latter, Argus should be ready for them to join forces to fight against themselves. Fortunately, Suma's answer made him relieved. If you can't kill the legendary undead personally, you should be able to. Pretending to be uncertain, Sumu asked curiously, Your Excellency Argus, do you have any information on this? Let me think. Putting his heart down, Argus desperately recalled, and finally found the information he needed in his vast memory bank. If I remember correctly, I had two notebooks before. One notebook records the complete inheritance of the Ghost Clan, and one notebook records the complete inheritance of the Lich Clan. The pen, Maris, that recorded the complete inheritance of the ghost family has been lost. It's the notebook that records the complete inheritance of the Lich clan it seems to be still there. Let me think about it. Originally, after completing the job transfer, where did I put it? While recalling the information in his mind, Argus flipped through his memories from decades or even hundreds of years ago. He didn't find out. After he said these two notebooks and described the appearance of these two notebooks containing the inheritance of the undead, Sumus pupils flashed with fine blue flames and shrank suddenly. The note Argus was talking about was the lich note that he got from Rogris. And, listen to what Argus means, this contains the notes of the lost heritage. There is a second one, Lord Argus said, but this notebook, resisting the shock in his heart, Sumu took out the black notebook he had obtained from Rogers. That's it. Seeing this notebook again, Argus was even more shocked than Sumu. I remember that hundreds of years ago, when I completed my job transfer, I had hidden this notebook in a very remote ancient tomb. How? Sumu got it. Before Rogris, it was Argus who got the notebook containing the complete Lich heritage, but for some reason, after completing the job transfer, Argus did not take this notebook with him, but took the notebook with him. It was placed in the tomb that Sumu entered when he came to the city of the undead later. Through the description in the ancient book, Rogris discovered the tomb, and also discovered the Lich note that Argus hid there, and finally the Lich note fell into the hands of Sumu. The Lich notes, which Argus kept in the tomb, the teleportation array in the ancient tomb, should also be built by Argus. However, what Sumu couldn't understand was, where did Argus get this Lich notebook, and after getting it, why did he store it in that ancient tomb? Looking at the black notebook, Argus took it in his hand after asking for Sumu's opinion, and flipped through it carefully. Then, he said, it's the notebook, it's just weird. After muttering a few words inexplicably, Argus smiled awkwardly and said, Speaking of which, I didn't find the Lich Notebook. It was a secret organization that found two notebooks that contained the breath of the undead and hired me. Help them research. Just 453. Some accidents happened later, and I changed my job to a Lich. When I became a Lich, I already had some experience in researching the Lich's notebook. In addition to containing the complete Lich heritage, this notebook also hides a very hidden mysterious power. Fearing that mysterious power, I hid it in an ancient tomb, on the other side of the continent. I just didn't expect that hundreds of years have passed, and this Lich notebook actually appeared in the hands of Lord Sumu, and the mysterious power hidden in it has disappeared without a trace. After telling some secrets about the Lich notes, Argus' mood was obviously much better. Not only because I saw this Lich note notebook here, but also because if Mu got the Lich notebook, there is a high probability that he has already obtained relevant information about the Lich King. The drama of Nefarian and Sumu teaming up against him, that he was worried about should not be played out. Sumu didn't ask much about the surprise that Argus said. Just thinking about it, a mage who was addicted to various experiments and researches, and worried that he would not have enough time and energy every day, was ecstatic when he encountered an opportunity to successfully transfer to a lich basically? The plot is, a mysterious organization obtained two notebooks containing the breath of the undead, and found Argus, who was already famous at the time, to help them study. After analyzing the inheritance contained in the lich notebook, Argus was moved, not only changed his job to become a lich, but also ran away with, up, two notebooks and disappeared from the human world. Perhaps for Argus, this is definitely one of his rare black histories, and naturally he has no face to say it. That is to say, did Lord Argus sense the danger hidden in that notebook, and hid it in the ancient tomb? Sumu thought about it and asked another question. That's right. Argus nodded and continued, although I don't know how Lord Sumu eliminated that power, but at that time, 
The power hidden in the lich's notebook was really dangerous, even after changing careers and becoming a lich. Sometimes I can't help but want to keep flipping through the notebook and learn the secret techniques recorded in it. In the end, in order to prevent myself from being unable to bear the temptation, I spent a lot of time and energy hiding it on the other side of the continent. The material of the lich note is very special. I have never seen it before. Discarding it is the best solution if it cannot be destroyed. But Sumu, you also know how tempting that mysterious power is for a mage who is keen on research. In the end, I still choose to hide it. Wait until your own strength and rank are enough, and then analyze it. It seems that his state during that time sounded, and Argus was a little scared, but also a little fortunate. Later, as my strength and rank gradually increased, the temptation, attraction of that mysterious power to me, gradually weakened. After, I was promoted to the legendary rank. I no longer had the idea of studying that notebook, and instead wanted to stay away from that notebook. Slowly, over time, I will forget it, bit by bit. After recounting his past with the Lich notebook, Argus let out a long sigh of relief. After listening to the whole process, Sumu was also a little scared. Thankfully, he is cautious enough. Thankfully, he has the erosion talent, and before opening the Lich notebook, he eroded the Lich note with the erosion talent except for all the marks and mysterious energies in it. Otherwise, I am afraid that he will become a puppet of an unknown existence, just like Rogris in his previous life. After silently digesting the information he had obtained, Sumu asked again, then, Mr. Argus, what is the name of the mysterious organization that entrusted you to study these two notebooks? After you turned into a lich, didn't that organization look for you? Of course I did, Argus said with a wry smile. Only a small part of what I was able to get in touch with showed the strength of that organization, but I couldn't bear the temptation. After I was transferred to a lich, I escaped from the human world and hid in an inaccessible place, place that has been in hiding for decades. In the beginning, I was still aware of the organization's pursuit of me. After decades and hundreds of years passed, that organization gradually disappeared, and I appeared as Argus and slowly established this undead city. Continue their research. The name of that organization seems to be called the Dark Order. Argus did not hide and continued to speak. For him, this is a very distant past. Hundreds of years have passed, and he has become the legendary Lich King, and that mysterious organization may have long since disappeared from history. Nothing to say. Dark Order, it seems that I have never heard of it in my previous life. Thinking back, Sumu nodded silently. The first notebook, the Lich's notebook, has enough information. Next is the second one. Dare to ask your excellency Argus. Where is the other note, the ghost note? After asking the question, Sumu stared at Argus closely. Two legacy notes. Compared with the lich note, he wanted to get the whereabouts of the ghost note. After all, the lich note has already fallen into his hands, and even if there are any secrets hidden in it, he has enough time to dig it out and he has already obtained the transfer information of the Lich King, and the whereabouts of the ghost note are related to whether he can obtain the second legendary career template in the shortest time, the Queen of Ghosts, or the Spirit of Annihilation. Even the information of the Lich note that has a lot to do with him has been revealed, and Argus naturally has no need to hide the information of the ghost note recalled, Argus said, that was when I first became a big lich. Once, in order to avoid the pursuit of the Dark Order, I strayed into a ghost forest. In order to seek shelter, I dedicated the ghost notebook to the ghost forest at that time, a ghostly leader, but later, the empire wiped out the undead on a large scale, and the ghost forest was also affected. The ghost leader was beheaded, and the ghost notebook should also become the empire's trophy. After telling the last information he knew, Argus hesitated for a while, but still persuaded, your Excellency Sumu, although I don't know how you cleared the mysterious power in the note, but it's better to have less contact with this kind of notes. When I was about to escape with two notebooks, I overheard the two senior leaders of the Dark Order mention that there are four such inheritance notebooks in total, namely Lich Note, Ghost Note, Bone Note and the Death Note corresponds to the four oldest and most orthodox undead races, the Lich, Ghost, Skeleton and Death Knight. No one knows where these four notebooks came from, and no one knows how many years, these four notebooks have existed, seem, these four inheritance notebooks contain a great secret, but as long as they are related to the inheritance notebooks, it seems that they will not end well. Sumu did not ignore Argus' well-meaning persuasion after all. According to the trajectory of the previous life, even if Argus, the Lich King who had been freed from the control of the Lich Note for hundreds of years, was swallowed up by Rogris in the end, becoming a stepping stone to his fame in the game world, although he is very confident in the erosion, talent, he still needs to maintain a necessary vigilance. Throwing the lich notes returned by Argus into the storage space, Sumu fell into deep thought. 
Inheritance notes are still to be found. In the absence of other legendary undead clues, the remaining three notebooks containing the complete undead legacy are undoubtedly the best choice for Sumu. The bone note and the death note were never seen by Argus. Ghost notes, but it is very likely that it will fall into the hands of the Empire and become a collection of the Empire. Pity. Players in the previous life have digged too shallowly into this plot, let alone the Dark Order, and even the four notebooks containing the complete inheritance of the undead have never been mentioned by players. Or, as players, they may dig deep into the plots and clues hidden in the Aborigines, that is, in PCs, and will not miss any clues that may become quests. But the monster, when encountering a monster, don't you just cut it? Who is idle and risking being besieged by monsters to learn about the past of monsters and dig out the history of monsters? If there is time to learn more about the past of NPCs, dig more NPC plots, do more quests, and get rich rewards, isn't it fragrant? So, when a monster in the game world is regenerated from a player in the real world, a large part of the information obtained by Sumu's previous life is not applicable. Also after becoming a monster, it was only then that Sumu, discovered that these inhospitable monster groups also have an unknown past and a magnificent history empire. Empire again. Thinking of this, Sumu couldn't help feeling that he was really walking the old road of Rogris. He killed Rogris himself, inherited the Lich Note, and came to the city of the undead instead of him, and will replace him in the future to attack the empire. There is a sense of fate in it. Of course, Sumu himself knew that it was just a coincidence. The so-called coincidences are just that he has been following the old path of his previous life. Progress. If Sumu gave up searching for ghost notes at this time, and turned his goal to finding those legendary ghosts, who might live in inaccessible places, their next trajectories would be very different. Fate never exists. There has never been a god of destiny who can control the fate of all life in the game world only. Raising his head sharply, Sumu looked at Nefarian with burning eyes, and asked in a bewitching tone, Your Excellency Nefarian, do you want to attack the Empire? In a word, Argus was startled. Nefarian was also shocked Empire. The full name of the Caesar Empire is the absolute overlord of this continent. Just the legendary heroes known to Argus, the Caesar Empire has more than a dozen, coupled with the three sacred weapons of the town and more epic heroes and hero professionals. The high-end combat power of the Caesar Empire surpasses any country on the continent. The Caesar Empire with such strength never fears the challenge of any enemy. Where are they? Argus. The legendary Lich King is obsessed with various experiments and research. He may not be afraid of any enemy attack in this city of the dead, but after leaving the city of the dead, the power of a Lich King will a sharp drop. Nefarian, the ghost dragon at the pinnacle of the legendary rank, can be said to have reached the pinnacle of the mainland in his own combat power, but it is not enough to resist the bombardment of equipment of this quality like the holy artifact. Besides, Nefarian itself is in a state of being wanted. Once it appears in the human world, the first person to greet it may not be the legendary hero of the human world, but the legendary dragon from Dragon Island. Otherwise, this proud and tyrannical ghost dragon is no longer hiding in the city of the dead and has become a mutually dependent partner with Argus. Sumu, although epic, has the power to defeat most legendary ranks and can also be regarded as a legendary monster boss. The monster bosses of the three legendary ranks are very powerful, but that doesn't mean they are enough to challenge Caesar's empire. Don't say anything else. It's just that the forbidden spells of holy light inscribed on the last ten pages of the Book of Light are slammed down one after another. Thinking of that terrible scene, Argus and Nefarian wilted in unison do not forget. There is also the threat of Dragon Island. Nefarian was silent, looking left and right. His pride would not allow him to admit himself, but go with Sumu to attack Caesar's empire it's harder to take. This is obviously to go into the toilet with a lantern to court death. Feces, it's not alive enough. Don't want to take the risk with Sumu. On the other hand, Argus, after a slight silence, informed Sumu of the strength of the Empire and their concerns. Three sacred artifacts of the town, threats from Dragon Island. Knowing these two pieces of information, Sumu pondered slightly. The legendary hero is far from the opponent of the legendary monster boss. The three sacred artifacts of the Caesar Empire in the Dragon Island, where the legendary dragon is located, are their greatest threats. If, is that so? While speaking, Sumu's hand covered Nefarian's body. Under Nefarian's somewhat surprised mood swings, a layer of death breath from Sumu enveloped Nefarian in it next moment. The figures of Sumu and Nefarian all disappeared from the altar. In just a few seconds, two figures, one big and one small, appeared on the altar without warning. Their location is the same as before. This, Sumu, how did you do it? This is your displacement skill. As soon as he returned to the altar, Nefarian couldn't sit still. The huge skull dragon head protruded in front of Sumu, 
and a series of soul fluctuations spread out throwing out one question after another. What Su Mu does is simple, it was just two phase shifts that started and took Nefarian from the altar to dozens of kilometers away. When Nefarian was still in a state of confusion, he took it back to the altar. Yes, as Su Mu stepped into the epic stage, he has been able to easily mobilize the aura of death and darkness in his body. As long as he wraps a target with his own breath of death and darkness, that target will be transferred with Su Mu when the phase shift is activated. With Su Mu's current strength, let alone a Nefarian, even if you add Agnes and the entire Death Knight order, it will be easy. With 28,000 points of spiritual attributes, Su Mu's phase shift can span up to 280,000 meters which is a full 280 kilometers, this distance. Don't say it's a curse. Even if 10 forbidden spells were bombarded at the same time, it was enough for them to leave the range of the forbidden spell bombardment in an instant. Nefarian was surprised. Argus was completely shocked. Even he, in this city of the dead, did not find out how Sumu and Nefarian disappeared and how they appeared. Apart from a slight to almost negligible magic power fluctuation, he didn't even have a sense of space fluctuation, or space being torn apart. He even suspects, even if he has opened the rune magic circle, in the city of the dead, Sumu can easily come, and go, and come and go freely. It also means, it is very likely that there is no need to join forces with Nefarian. This strange skeleton that has just advanced to the epic is enough to kill him alone. For a time, Argus was a little desolate. This situation of being caught up by a lotcomer at an unimaginable speed made the Lich King, who had existed for hundreds of years, feel that he was old, demonstrates the ability to phase shift. After completely subduing Argus and Nefarian, Sumu smiled again, Lord Argus. Presumably this is not the first time, the Empire has come to attack the city of the undead. Don't you want to completely solve this hidden danger? If the Empire no longer exists, I am afraid that no one will disturb the city of the dead again. Lord Argus can also devote all his energy and time to research. Nefarian, Your Excellency, being bound in a mere city of undead, is not the nature of a proud ghost dragon. Do you want to fly freely in the outside sky? Do you want to destroy everything you want to destroy with impunity? Would you like to take revenge for the last revenge? Confused, indeed it is. But under the premise of showing enough ability to ensure their safety, this kind of bewitching is extremely effective. Argus doesn't know yet. When he said these words, but seeing the blue soul fire Sumu constantly jumping in Nefarian's huge eyes, he knew that this ghost dragon was tempted. Feel sorry, Your Excellency Sumu. Unlike Nefarian's excitement, after hesitating for a while, Argus said softly, I'm just a mage. I just want to devote my limited time and energy to infinite research and experiments, and I don't want to participate in war. Of course, if the two, Your Excellencies are unfavorable in the war, you are also welcome to return to the city of the undead at any time. I hope Your Excellency Sumu will understand. After these words were finished, seeing that Sumu and Nefarian had no intention of doing it themselves, Argus was relieved and prepared to return to his mage tower, replacing his complicated feelings with research and experiments. Lord Argus, wait a minute. Sumu spoke, and the thin body that Argus had just turned around froze slightly. Without any negative emotions, Sumu said softly, Lord Argus is unwilling to join it no one is reluctant. The city of the dead was created by Lord Argus, and naturally belongs to Lord Argus. It was before, it is now, and it will be in the future. However, if Lord Nefarian and I really return in disgrace, Lord Argus needs to continue to protect me. 453. It's natural. Argus' frozen body eased, and there was a touch of relief in his tone. Return the peach. It is his attitude that he is unwilling to join the war, but still provides shelter for the undead. If you don't force yourself to join the war, the city of the dead will still be yours. Sumu and Nefarian will not hate themselves because of this. This is Sumu's attitude. In this way, Sumu expresses his kindness to himself. Even in the advanced epic, he did not intend to unite with Nefarian to capture the city of the undead. Even if he did not want to join the war, he did not intend to be dissatisfied or jealous of himself. He will not and cannot prevent them from invading the human world same. He also does not distort his will but respects his own choice. Seem, this strange skeleton was not as ferocious as imagined. The vigilance in his heart slowly dropped, and a smile appeared on Argus' dry face hidden in the hood. I'm taking the liberty to ask, what was the name of Lord Argus during his lifetime? Atlas Esther. When Sumus' voice came again, Argus softly spat out a name long buried in history. Then, with a flash of black light on his body, 
he disappeared from the altar. This time, Argus threw himself into research and experiments with a relaxed mood, instead of just trying to fill his mood with experiments and research before, so that he didn't have the heart to think about other things. Atlas Esther, repeating the name in his mind, Su Mu on the altar also showed a smile. His choice was right. Argus' heart decided that it was impossible for him to set foot in the human world, let alone join this war, sheltering the undead while not interfering with Sumu and Nefarian's decisions, was already the limit of what the good old man of the Lich King could do. Even if Sumu joins Nefarian to force Argus, he will not let him join, but it will lead to the friendly relationship between the three turning into hostility from now on. The biggest trump card of creating and eradicating the city of the undead, Argus, who has been focusing on research after he changed his career to become a Lich, is not very powerful in the group of the Lich King. Even if he joins, the help it brings to Sumu is relatively limited, rather than forcing Argus to respect his choice. In this way, even if his and Nefarian's invasion fails, the city of the undead is still their sanctuary. Furthermore, Atlas Esther, this name is by no means unknown. Even though it has been obscured by history for hundreds of years, Sumu still heard this name during his 10 years of gaming career in his previous life. It was an auction. After stepping into the legendary tier, Sumu was fortunate enough to participate in an auction among top players. In that auction, Sumu saw what a real rich man is, and was fortunate to see the final equipment of that auction, the approximate attributes of a top-level legendary armor. That piece of legendary armor, that is only half a step away from the holy artifact, its attributes are second. Sumu vaguely remembered that the equipment forger's name appeared in the system description of the legendary armor. If he remembered correctly, the name of the master blacksmith, who forged that legendary armor was Atlas Est. Argus, this is a legendary Lich King, but when he was a human being hundreds of years ago, he was also a master blacksmith named Atlas Est. He was also a master alchemist, who once had a great reputation in the human world. For Sumu, the identities of master blacksmith and master alchemist are much more important than the identity of the Lich King held by Argus. At least, the epic quality soul crystal on his body seems to be able to pass through Argus to upgrade its quality to legendary quality. Argus withdrew. His finally exposed identity also allowed Sumu to unearth an unprecedented treasure. Nefarian would not quit. After Argus left the altar, Nefarian completely gave up his restraint and circled around Sumu constantly. Nefarian at this time, it doesn't look like the proud and tyrannical ghost dragon at all, but rather like a star who has been locked up at home for a long time and eagerly wants his master to take him out for a walk. Don't blame Nefarian. The legendary dragon itself is a race that yearns for freedom and wanton behavior. Even with the constraints of the Dragon Island, there are often rumors of legendary dragons appearing in the game world, disturbing the human world. After changing from a legendary dragon to a ghost dragon, Nefarian's character became more tyrannical and more reckless. Such a ghost dragon, but because of the pursuit of Dragon Island, it has spent decades, even hundreds of years, in the City of the Dead, a place where birds don't cheat now. Sumu appears. The phase shift is a magical displacement skill that allows them to ignore the bombardment of the forbidden spell and even ignore the pursuit of Long Island, even if ten giant dragons from the peak of the legend attack. Won't they run away if they can't beat them? A phase shift is a full 280 kilometers zero several times, even if all the legendary dragons in Dragon Island are dispatched. It is impossible to catch up with them, and it is impossible to find them. Under these circumstances, Nefarian, who was about to go insane, naturally wanted to rush out of the city of the undead and go to the human world to slaughter the quartet, relieve the pain that he had been holding back for dozens of hundreds of years, and take revenge for the last time. But Sumu is in no hurry. After appeasing Nefarian, they began to discuss the specific details of this attack on Caesar's empire. For example, who is in charge? For example, the composition of the undead army, zero dollars. In the process of attacking Caesar's empire, Su must mount problem etc. Nefarian is reluctant to compromise, but Sumu, who has seized its weakness, always has time to compromise. Ten days later, all preparations are made. After being baptized in the jet black beam for a long time, Agnes has grown by leaps and bounds in terms of level and four-dimensional attributes, and initially has a bit of Sumu's demeanor. It can be said, aside from the outlier Sumu, Agnes may be one of the few undeads who can leapfrog the epic rank and defeat the weaker legendary rank. Of course, this refers to the case of one-on-one -on -one combat. If you bring the death knights, and then unfold, gather, and fuse the death halos of all the death knights, the fear knights will have the ability to challenge higher levels otherwise. 
Sumu doesn't have to take the Death Knight so seriously. This time to attack the Caesar Empire, Suma's primary goal is naturally the Ghost Notes, that are likely to have become Caesar's trophies, and obtain the second legendary occupation template. The secondary goal is to harvest experience on a large scale to improve your level. Death Monarch 5.5, the epic rank job template, is already comparable to the top legendary job template, even if you can't advance to the legendary level. Just leveling up on the epic level can greatly improve Suma's combat power. The current Sumu is not yet the opponent of the Ghost Dragon and only has the power to fight. If his level is increased by 10, no, as long as he is increased by another 6 or 7, his strength will skyrocket again enough to allow him to defeat the Ghost Dragon. By that time, it is no longer a dream to enslave the Ghost Dragon and turn him into his own exclusive mount. Sumu, whose strength is at the peak of the continent, no longer has to pay attention to the possible dangers. Crush the entire continent with absolute strength, collect all the resources he needs, and push his strength to the peak again. Fantasy. Do not, it's just the plan. Because at this time Sumu has enough strength to implement these plans step by step. Bring the plans that originally existed in fantasy to reality, and achieve his peak leap. After making all preparations, Sumu left the City of the Dead. With a lot of information obtained from Argus, Su Mu at this time not only knew the specific route from the City of the Undead to Caesar's Empire, but also knew the approximate locations of many large cities and imperial capitals in Caesar's Empire. In this attack on the Empire, the number of undead that Su Mu brought with him was not large. Apart from Su Mu himself, the Death Monarch, and Nefarian, the Ghost Dragon, the only thing he took away from the City of the Dead was Agnes and the Death Knights under his command. The city of the undead is not too far from Caesar's empire. Even from the border of the Caesar empire, it was a thousand kilometers away. With such a long distance, the city of the undead came out of the mountains, coupled with the character of Argus. So, no matter who it is, the city of the undead is no threat to the Caesar empire. At the beginning, Fred traveled thousands of miles to attack the city of the undead. In Suma's view, this behavior was purely fed up troublemaking. Same, also because this distance is not too close. Su Mu gave up taking other undead, in the city of the undead. Aside from the Death Knights, the most powerful warriors in the entire city of the undead were the Ghost Clan, the Stitching Monster Clan, and the other middle and low-level undead, that numbered over one million. Needless to say, the middle and low-level undead moved too slowly. It took more than ten days to bring the millions of undead legions from the undead to the border of the city Caesar Empire. Moreover, its combat effectiveness may not necessarily be high. The combat power of the stitched monsters is high, but their movement speed is not as good as that of ordinary undead. In the end, the ghost family moves fast enough, but it is difficult to form an effective fighting force before an epic howling banshee appears and dominates the entire ghost family. The end result is, this time, he left the City of the Dead and attacked the Caesar Empire, known as the Hegemon of the Mainland, with a Ghost Dragon, a Fear Knight, and hundreds of Death Knights under the Fear Knight, accompanied by violent soul fluctuations that spread like a violent storm, a gigantic figure whose body was half rotten crossed from the sky. After leaving the City of the Undead, Nefarian completely released himself, flying recklessly in the high sky, howling, flying at low altitude from time to time, and spraying the breath of the Ghost Dragon with the ultimate breath of death. Darkness and frost on the ground, polluting a large area of forest or grassland, turning it into a full of dead place of death. Without the shackles of the city of the dead, at the same time, he is no longer afraid of the crusade that may come from Dragon Island. Nefarian, who has been holding back for hundreds of years, is like a wild horse running wild, wanton revelry. Nefarian is cool without the bondage. Su Mu is not happy because, at this time, he was not running with the death knights on the ground, but standing on the back of Nefarian. Yes, you read that right. When he left the City of the Dead, Sumu realized his dream first, standing on the back of Nefarian, the Ghost Dragon, and using the Ghost Dragon stronger than himself as a mount. Under normal circumstances, Nefarian naturally does not allow Sumu to use it as a mount. Don't say that Suma's strength is not as good as Nefarian. With the pride and tyranny of this Ghost Dragon, even if Suma's strength has surpassed Nefarian, it will not allow itself to submit to Sumu, let alone become his mount, but not hard. Sumu can come soft, attacking Caesar's empire, finding the ghost notes, and harvesting experience at the same time are just Suma's goal, leaving the city of the dead to have fun, and avenge the last time. This is Nefarian's goal, when Nefarian still needs to beware, of the forbidden spell bombardment of the Caesar empire, and the possible crusade of Dragon Island. Sumu began to fool Waibu, to lay out the facts and reason with Nefarian. 1. Nefarian can fly, 
the Death Knights have mounts, only Su Mu has the slowest speed. Without Nefarian's help, they might not be able to enter Caesar's empire for a long time. To, whether it is the forbidden spell bombardment of the Caesar empire, or the crusade from Dragon Island, it is decided that, when danger strikes, Su Mu will wrap Nefarian with his own breath as soon as possible, so as to release the phase shift, escape the danger with a ghost dragon. 3. Ghost dragon is stronger than Su Mu, so this is not a mount. It is a powerful ghost dragon helping a weaker companion. 4. After the Su Mu advanced legend, they will help the ghost dragon to break through the upper limit of the legendary rank. Before that, they need to get familiar with it. In this way, after Su Mu advanced, the chance of helping the ghost dragon to break through is even greater. The ghost dragon said, flying with Su Mu is no problem, it can fly with the dragon's claws holding Su Mu. Su Mu said, I am not used to this posture, and when I am in danger, flying in this posture, my breath can't wrap you as quickly as possible, and the result is likely to be that I run away and you are finished. Gilong said, it is impossible to be a mount when you are a mount, and you will never be a mount in this life. He was ridden on his head by a humble skeleton, and it was rumored that he would lose his face. Su Mu said, of course not a mount. No one has the right to stand on the head of a ghost dragon and step on it. However, in order to make the next plan smoother, the mighty Galong's excellency allowed his partner to stand on his strong back. Ghost dragon said, Su Mu said, that's it. After the first time he deceived the ghost dragon to protect him on the grounds of helping him break through the ranks, and the second time he tricked the ghost dragon out of the city on the grounds of revenge, Sumu made the ghost dragon lame for the third time. As a result, when I leave the city of the dead, Agnes ran wildly across the earth with her death knights, while Nefarian soared into the sky and spread his wings at this time, Sumu was already standing on its back. It was the first time to ride a dragon, and to appear on the back of the ghost dragon in this way of standing so naturally it was not very pleasant, especially when Nefarian made all kinds of extreme thrilling actions in the high air. There were countless times that Su Mu was almost used by Nefarian from his back. Nefarian has no self-awareness of a mount, so naturally he doesn't care about Su Mu's feelings. In its view, allowing Su Mu to step on his back is already a blessing from the Dragon King. Su Mu had to find a way on his own. With his feet, he smashed the two pieces of rotting flesh next to Nefarian's spine dragon. His legs fell into it, and he rode on Nefarian's spine dragon, which stabilized his body. Nefarian complained about this gesture, but did not object. This proud and tyrannical ghost dragon does not know that Suma's series of behaviors are just a small application of psychology in the real world at this time. Su Mu, far weaker than Nefarian, had stepped on its back and rode on its spine dragon. When Su Mu is stronger, Nefarian is also used to this state. Su Mu is one step closer, from standing on the back to riding the spine dragon, to the neck, and finally to the top of the head, Nefarian got used to this process step by step to the end. Maybe Su Mu didn't even need to enslave it. Su Mu has already successfully climbed to the top of the ghost dragon's head, and domesticated this powerful ghost dragon into his own exclusive mount. Two days later, it's approaching evening, under the full force of the Death Knights, they crossed a distance of more than 1,000 kilometers, set foot on the territory of the Caesar Empire, from the City of the Dead in the mountains, and approached a border city, 453 perhaps because it is near the city of the undead. The city named Fortress City is not too big, but there are a lot of professionals stationed in it. The 10 meter high thick city wall can effectively resist the attack of the sea of undead or other monsters. As many as tens of thousands of professionals stationed here can also guarantee that even if there is a sea of undead or other monster groups, they will be enough to support the source of the empire. Approaching the border means frequent fighting. Even if the targets of these battles are only down and out robbers, small undead in the wilderness, or growing beasts in the mountains and forests, they also attract many adventurers. The regular troops stationed in the fortress city naturally disdain to take action against these petty existences. The targets of their defense have always been the city of the undead in the mountains and the possible beast tide that may form in the endless wasteland. These petty battles are handed over to the adventurer's nature. With a large number of combat missions and mission rewards from the Caesar Empire, this fortress city has attracted a lot of players. Since the game started, the fortress city has attracted more than 10,000 players and players who have the financial resources to rush to this fortress city on the border of the empire from other cities are at least level 20 players with formal occupations. This level, this level, it can't be called the top among players, but it is basically the elite among players. It's approaching evening. It was getting dark. Teams of players who have returned from hunting are queuing up to enter the city, or paying tasks to receive their own rewards, or selling goods in exchange for other resources. That is at this time, a black dot appeared on the distant horizon. All players within the fortress city also heard the system prompt sound in their minds. 
What? The epic story mission is on. Mission name, Fortress City Guard Battle. Mission description, from the Bone Burial Ground to the City of the Undead. King of Bones Su Mu has undergone a transformation in advanced epic. This time, he appeared on the border of the Empire with a more powerful enemy, as a member of the Fortress City. You can only pick up the weapon in your hand and defend the territory of the Empire. Quest requirements, kill or repel Su Mu. The King of Bones, destroy or expel the incoming Death Knights. Task rewards, battlefield contribution degree system begins. All players participating in this Fortress City Guard battle will receive corresponding contribution degrees according to their actions. If the mission is successful, all players participating in this mission can exchange corresponding equipment, props, experience points and attribute points with their contribution. This mission is an epic story mission, and the highest quality of equipment and props is epic quality. Three times in a row, a crisp system prompt sounded in the minds of all players. After seeing the relevant description of this mission, all the players were shocked, and angry, she, it appeared once a few months ago, and the undead boss, that destroyed the Ruhr Principality on the other side of the continent appeared again, not only appeared on the borders of the Empire, but also advanced from the original Lord rank to the epic rank, this novice village boss, which most players thought had ended unexpectedly appeared in the player's sight again in this way, surprise followed by anger, the battle of defending the city a few months ago was just a heroic plot mission, which caused heavy losses to the players, and led to the downfall of a principality. This time, the defense of the city is an epic story mission. To know, even after a few months of growth, most of the players' levels are still in the range of 10 to 20, and their occupational ranks are still in the apprentice or official ranks. It is equivalent to the basic level and advanced level in monsters. In the entire fortress city, only the presidents of a few game guilds, or the main battle players among them, can break through to level 30 and enter the field of elite professions. In this case, how do players fight against an epic boss? It can be said, when the system prompts sounded, the strength of the players in the fortress city was already doomed, and this time the fortress city defense battle was no different from the previous giant rock city defense battle. Players just play soy sauce, act as field reporters, take photos, and record videos. The real power to resist the King of Bones is still the Aborigines, only. After having the first experience, players have realized that this kind of war is not just as simple as game CG. In the game CG, even if the monster boss is not killed by the NPC, even if the NPC is killed by the monster boss, it will not affect the players watching the game CG. What about here? As long as the NPCs in the Fortress City can't stop the King of Bones coming again, all creatures in the Fortress City whether they are natives or players, will all be wiped out. When the player's level is still low, they don't care. Anyway, apart from the one-hour resurrection cooldown, they have nothing to lose. But when the player's level gradually increases, the price of dying again will be great. Die once, drop one level. Even the equipment on the body has the possibility of falling. How difficult is it to upgrade the player's level in second world? Dying once is equivalent to wasting a player's time for more than 10 days or even a month or two. Under these circumstances, these players were only angry when their own strength was far from enough to resist the King of Bones attacking again. Rubbish games, ruin my youth. Is this dog game really pliable? Planning a sacrifice to the sky, the mana is boundless. All kinds of complaints spewed out of the players' mouths, constantly cursing the game company and dog planning but no matter how scolded, players still have to act. No matter the last time, they don't care. If they don't care this time, they will lose a lot if this defense battle fails, no matter how big or small the effect is, as long as they do a little more. The chances of winning the Fortress City defense battle will be higher. As a fortress city on the border of Caesar's empire, the Fortress City's warning range is larger than Sumu imagined on Nefarian's back. When he was still more than 10 kilometers away from the Fortress City, he received a sound from the system corresponding. Players should have also received the quest opening beep. With Nefarian's strength and speed, it was only a few dazzling times to cross these 10 kilometers, but in order to wait for Agnes and the Death Knights, under Sumus' persuasion, Nefarian reluctantly agreed to lower himself speed. On the ground, Agnes ran with hundreds of Death Knights on horseback. The Death Knights of all Black Knight armors, Black Knight spears, and Black Knight swords were like a black wave constantly approaching the fortress city high in the air. Nefarian's constant circuitous flight matched the speed of the Death Knights on the ground, even if they were hundreds of meters in the air. The powerful death breath and the terrifying dragon might spread out, affecting everything on the earth. Inside the fortress, when Su Mu and Nefarian stepped into the warning range, the NPC spellcasters on the city wall had already discovered these intruders through the scout runes arranged on the warning line, 
and reported as soon as possible soon. When Su Mu and others were still seven or eight kilometers away from the fortress city, the professionals in the entire city were already in place, and the epic heroes and hero professionals who guarded the city also appeared on the city wall. An ordinary city naturally does not need epic heroes to guard it, but as a frontier fortress, the city of the dead is especially guarded against. If the high-level officials of the Caesar Empire knew that Argus would not leave the city of the dead on their own initiative, the guards here would not be epic heroes, but legendary heroes appeared on the city walls. The epic hero, who was obviously the caster took over the reconnaissance rune at the first time and released the corresponding skills to manifest the picture captured by the reconnaissance rune in front of him. Amidst the rippling water, a water mirror emerges out of thin air. The picture of Nefarian soaring in the sky and the picture of the death knight galloping on the ground appeared in the eyes of the epic hero and many hero professionals around him. At the same time, just a glance, the epic hero looks upheaval. He didn't know Nefarian, but a rotten dragon that appeared in the undead camp and exuded a huge death and darkness aura, at least it was a bone dragon of epic rank, don't say anything else, just a skull dragon is far from being able to resist the forces in the fortress city, besides, not just a skull dragon, the epic hero did not recognize the nefarian ghost dragon, but he recognized the death knights galloping across the land, an order of death knights numbered in the hundreds, and its leader must be an epic dread knight, even if there is no skull dragon soaring high in the sky, a single fear knight with hundreds of death knights, can easily turn the entire fortress city into a dead city, become the new city of the dead, send a signal to the empire. With a livid face, he spit out this sentence, and the epic hero mage clenched the staff in his hand, prepare for the death battle, death battle. It means that in the cognition of this epic hero, this defense of the city is doomed to fail. They sent a signal to the empire to fight to the death, not to wait for the arrival of reinforcements from the empire, because the strength of the fortress city simply could not hold the arrival of reinforcements, but to prepare to take the lives of the city's professionals and residents procrastinate, give the empire more time to prepare for the undead's attack. Yes, when this order was issued, the epic hero, as the supreme controller of the fortress city, sent all the creatures of the fortress city, including the professionals stationed here, the residents living in the city, including those active in the fortress city, adventurers and players, including himself, were sacrificed to hold back the undead giving the empire more time to react. Perhaps, some would say that epic heroes are cold-blooded, but every heroic professional standing on the city wall knows that this is the most correct order. When the undead have appeared and entered the warning range, the outcome of the fortress city is already doomed. No one can escape under the pursuit of a complete order of death knights, and no one can run faster than an epic bone dragon, doomed to die. Why not fight to the death at this moment to buy more time for the empire? When they died, the empire had more time to prepare and could stop these undead. Their family and friends in the Empire can also survive smoothly. When the epic hero mage ordered it, Li Hao, a hero mage beside him turned on the messenger, which conveyed everything facing the fortress city, and the decisions made by the epic hero to the imperial capital at this time. A hero professional with a long bow in his hand suddenly pointed at the picture displayed in the water mirror and exclaimed, this, this is, Bone Dragon Knight. Under the reminder of the hero professional, the epic hero mage noticed the tiny black spot, on the back of the bone dragon, compared with the huge body of the bone dragon, that tiny black spot is naturally easy to ignore. It was horrified by the fact that the bone dragon attacked that the epic hero mage subconsciously ignored the tiny black spot. Now, reminded by the hero professional, the epic hero mage controls the water mirror to magnify the picture from the reconnaissance rune. Then, a figure shrouded in deep full-body heavy armor, sitting on the back of the bone dragon, appeared in front of them. Bone Dragon Knight, or something more terrifying, for a time, the face of the epic hero mage, who was determined to fight to the death was filled with despair. Whether it is the Bone Dragon, or the Death Knights, the power in the fortress city can no longer resist now. Not only is the Bone Dragon, and the Death Knights united to attack, a terrifying undead that can even drive a Bone Dragon, even more so. At this moment, the two dragons are coming, Ten kilometers is gone in the blink of an eye. When he was still far from the fortress city, Su Mu could barely persuade Nefarian to keep his speed in line with the Death Knights. When he was near the fortress city and could see the many faces on the walls of the fortress city, Nefarian, who was completely excited, could no longer control it. Crazy acceleration. At this time, Nefarian, who had been working for dozens of hundreds of meters, swooped down from a height of several hundred meters, dropped sharply, and charged towards the city wall of the fortress. It seems that he wants to directly crash the city with his huge body. Of course, Nefarian wasn't that stupid. Even if it has been able to do this, 
it will not do it purely by using its own body to crash the walls of a city. Is a falling ghost dragon good looking? Wasn't that being laughed at by Sumu? Its sharp dive at the highest speed is just a joke, and by the way, it wants to kill the group of heroes on the city wall, who seem to be the strongest in the city. A pitch black light flickered in Nefarian's mouth, and the breath of death was imminent. At this time, Sumu was in a hurry. Another important reason for his attack on the empire is to kill epic heroes and legendary heroes, so as to obtain more and more insufficient free points. As Sumu advanced again, the difficulty for him to obtain free points also increased again. To get one free point, he needs to kill several lord monsters or hero professionals, or kill an epic monster, or an epic hero. Although the number of epic heroes and hero professionals on the city wall is small, it is a profit after all. He didn't want his profit to disappear due to a play by Nefarian then. When Nefarian swooped down to only a few dozen meters away from the city wall, and the breath of death in his mouth was about to be completed, Sumu jumped up from Nefarian's back and fell towards the city wall in midair. The Wings of Liberty spear sack has already appeared on Sumu's back. Subsequently, an explosive short spear appeared in Sumu's hand and was motivated by his power, which now reached more than 46,000 points and instantly crossed the distance of the last tens of meters and bombarded the crowd on the city wall. Suma's strength has increased, so that the power of the exploding short spear has also increased a lot. Although as early as the ghost dragon attack, the heroes on the city wall had taken various defensive measures, and they even blasted the heavy attacks in the direction of the ghost dragon's attack but explosive short spear blast, except for the shield on the epic hero mage, which resisted the power of the short spear burst. The remaining dozen or so hero professionals were all torn apart in the spreading explosions, and flames, boom, a loud bang, Sumu, who fell to the city wall, slowly got up from a half-kneeling state as the large pieces of masonry on the city wall shattered and dented. At this time, the ghost dragon flew by, the huge body left a shadow on the city wall. The broken and sharp dragon wings tore apart the two arrow towers behind the city wall. Nefarian rose into the air, climbed up into the sky, and dived into the sky again. Without Sumus obstruction, Nefarian began to unleash his tyranny to his heart's content. As the dragon claws swayed, the buildings in the fortress city were destroyed and collapsed. As the dragon wings swayed, the gust of wind blew up and fell countless creatures. When the death breath containing the triple power of death breath, dark breath and frost breath spewed out of Nefarian's mouth, Everything in a vast area was covered with a layer of black ice. Wow. The ice shatters. A figure stood up quietly only. The one who stood up was no longer a creature in the fortress city, but an undead who sank in the breath of death. On the city wall, Sumu was not idle either. When an explosive short spear blasted out, killing all the hero professionals around the epic hero mage, and getting a few free points to be credited, Sumu's figure also appeared in front of the only surviving epic hero mage. Cold light flashed, the razor-sharp blade of the skeleton maw blade easily unfolded the shield on the mage and slashed past the epic hero mage. When the system prompt to kill the epic hero sounded, Sumu took back the bone sword and walked towards the city, for, why, we, with a hint of incomprehensible voice, Sumu's footsteps paused slightly. Subsequently, he said, there is no reason, it's just living and dead. Yes, it's just living and dead. Why are there so many? After receiving Sumu's answer, the epic hero mage seemed to be relieved, and there was a faint bloodshot on his face, and a stiff smile appeared on his face next moment. Bloodline erupts, the strongest guardian and the supreme controller of the fortress city quietly separated into two pieces. Epic heroes and hero pros are dead, and there is no more resistance in this city. Thousands of professionals, the highest is not the instructor rank. 10, 0, 0, 0 players, not even a professional. The game world is not other games, that Susumu has played in his previous life, and there is a saying that blood is forced to be deducted. In this real game world, if you don't break the defense, you won't break the defense. It's the same as how many people come. The Death Knights have arrived. It was divided into four parts under the order of Agnes, and they attacked from the four gates of the fortress city and broke in. The Death Halo unfolds. Even if there is no integration and superposition of Agnes, the death aura that is automatically unfolded by a Lord Level Death Knight alone contains the power of death, which will turn an ordinary person or an apprentice occupation in a very short period of time. Corrosion. Even full-time professionals and business professionals can hardly withstand the corrosion of this force of death for a long time. Do not forget, the death halo is only a skill that comes with the death knight. Except for the death halo, every death knight has the dark knight skills, 
and fighting skills to easily kill a hero professional. Nefarian is destroying, and scrupulous, the Death Knight is harvesting, and all the experience points from the harvest are gathered on Agnes to promote the further growth of this fear knight. Su Mu can't be idle either. Tens of thousands of professionals, more than 10,000 players, plus hundreds of thousands of residents in the city. This is also a huge amount of experience. In no hurry, after entering the city wall from the city wall, Sumu put away the skeleton sword. He stretched out his hand slightly. Thousands of mana points were consumed, and a huge rune magic circle appeared in the open space in the fortress city. Then, a strong aura of death emanated from the rune formation. Withered and pale skeleton arms smashed through the soil, and pale skeletons crawled out of the ground. Up, summoned skeletons. With the advanced epic, this boss skill released by Sumu has summoned tens of thousands of skeletons of various ranks in one go. After appearing in the fortress city, Sumu's mind moved, and the tens of thousands of skeletons scattered, began to harvest the life in the city, and turned them into experience points for Sumu. This is not the end. After summoning the core of skeletons, Sumu walked all the way towards the center of the city. When he was about to reach the center of the city, a group of figures appeared in front of him. It was a team composed of professionals in the city. There were still a large number of residents in the center of the city. The Death Knights and the Skeleton Army had not yet spread here, and this place could barely be called a pure land. Professionals who did not appear on the city walls were naturally the lowest-ranking professionals at this time. In the face of Sumu, a mysterious existence shrouded in pitch-black armor, his body exudes a very strong aura of death and darkness. The low-level professional team of less than 10 people held swords and gritted their teeth muster up the courage to rush this way, tens of meters away. It may be just a leap for Su Mu, but for these low-level professionals, it will take a while to leap. Su Mu did not draw his knife. There is also no release skills. When these professionals were only more than 10 meters away from him, a strong aura of death and darkness emanated from his body like black mist and thick smoke, shrouding these professionals in it next moment. Their swords are rusting, their armor is fading, their flesh is rotting. Almost in just one or two breaths, the team of professionals fell to the ground. When they got up again, they had become them, throwing away their own flesh and blood, picking up their own swords. This team of professionals, that had been transformed into skeletons instinctively rushed forward, looking for the living and harvesting the living, turn out to be erosion, Talent can still be used in this way. Looking at the skeleton team that had gradually disappeared, Sumu was a little surprised. Just now, when encountering this professional team, Sumu had a whim and integrated the unknown energy formed by the erosion talent into the breath of death and darkness that he possessed and spread. The result was the scene from before. At this time, he can release the erosion ability without touching the target's head. This not only means that from now on, he can remotely erode the body or corpse of the enemy, but also means that he can erode a large number of targets at one time. Move on. Following the feeling in his heart, Sumu constantly integrated the unknown energy into the breath of death and darkness, and controlled the mixed energy to spread out forming a large gray-black mist, or magic. The billowing demonic energy rose up, and it continued to spread towards the surroundings like smoke. Just walking on the main road of the city, and walking towards the center of the city, Sumus attribute panel has refreshed a lot of information prompts around him, in that building. The residents of Dakang and the low-level professionals, who never joined the war were eroded, and transformed by the diffused exhaust gas. Flesh stripped, resurrection of bones, pieces of residents and low-level professionals were transformed from living to undead by Sumu in this way. Ding, you have comprehended a new skill, skeleton recovery. When the crisp system prompt sounded in his mind again, Sumu was a little dumbfounded. Perhaps the number of undead he transformed in this way exceeded a thousand. It caused the system to determine that he had comprehended this skill. Anyway, having an extra skill is always a good thing. Even though, the role of this skill almost completely overlaps with the new application of the erosion talent he has just developed. The way forward, by the time they finally reached the center of the city, the undead transformed by Sumu in this way had exceeded 10,000. Rolling magic shrouded, Sumu is set against the background like a demon who crawled out of hell. With the billowing demonic energy that had spread to thousands of meters away, Sumu appeared in the central square of the fortress city. He saw a group of players. Then, a new idea jumped out of his mind. When he was still a lord, he once tried to erode a player. It was only because of his lack of strength at that time that he did not complete that erosion now. From the lord rank to the epic rank, his strength has increased tenfold. Perhaps, he could try again and erode the biggest anomaly in these game worlds, the player. Move your heart at will. When this thought emerged from Sumus' mind, the billowing demonic energy surrounding him also seemed to have life. Gathered together and covered the players on the city center square. In the game world, 
Once the defensive battles or regional battlefields like now are opened, the teleportation array cannot be used at this point. In the worldview of the Aborigines, it is because once the war is started, the gathering of a large number of professionals and even high-level professionals will interfere with the fluctuation of space. At this time, when the teleportation array is opened, it is basically teleported into the turbulent space and killed in seconds result. In the player's worldview, it is the limitation of the system god. Not only the teleportation array, when this kind of plot mission is activated, except for some extremely precious and high-grade props, teleportation spells, teleportation scrolls, and other long-distance crossing methods are also unavailable. It is common knowledge for players that the plot mission is open, and the teleportation array cannot be used but, when the defenders in the fortress city are killed in seconds, the professionals stationed here have no resistance to the attacking undead, and even more and more undead are born in the city and spread. Players instinctively gather towards the city center square. Su Mu arrived and was enveloped in a billowing demonic energy, like a demon god crawling out of hell. This terrifying scene naturally caught the attention of the players at the first time only. There are not many players here. Levels and steps are also just normal. Not every player has the courage to face Sumu, after seeing the scene where Sumu jumped from the bone dragon into the city, and killed the epic hero mage in seconds. Some people may ask, isn't it just a game, what's not to dare, but, don't forget the authenticity of this game? Sumu appeared in this state, not to mention the billowing demonic energy, that permeated thousands of meters away but the extremely terrifying aura emanating from Suma's body. These players who have already been pressed can't breathe. Under such circumstances, how could they muster the courage to fight Sumu? So, when Sumu controlled the billowing demonic energy to gather together, forming a tentacle-like shape of smoke that spread toward these players, the most useful response these players made was probably to turn on the camera. The magic spread. In the state that these players did not resist, the smoke tentacles smoothly extended to the players' sides, and began to invade their bodies. As the combination of the unknown energy formed by the erosion, talent plus the breath of death and the breath of darkness, this smoky magical energy has the characteristics of all three at the same time. When the magic energy invaded, the performance of those players' bodies was the same as when Sumu first eroded the players. The player's body becomes dry and painful, slowly lose life. There is also a negative buff on the player's status bar. This is an erosion of the body. When the bodies of this group of players all became dry and dead, like a group of mummified corpses, the magical energy with unknown energy characteristics also began to spread towards the player's minds that is, the player's souls. Same as the first time. This time, Sumus' erosion of the player's soul still encountered obstacles. The kind of power that he has not yet resolved is still protecting the souls of the players only. Today's Sumu is ten times stronger than the previous Sumu. Even under the protection of that power, the magic energy is slowly but steadily eroding the souls of the players. One minute, five minutes, ten minutes. In the process, those players still did not die but the fear in their hearts gradually disappeared, but instead they became curious about their current state. The most daring player not only filmed the whole process, but even thought about studying his current physical state. Time flies. When this erosion time reached 15 minutes, Sumu finally broke through the protective film outside the player's soul, and truly touched the player's soul. Without protection, how weak is the player's soul in the eyes of Sumu? Almost instantly, the magic energy that invaded the player's body eroded the player's entire soul, only it was different from what Sumu imagined. After eroding the player's soul, he did not gain complete control like eroding skeletons and eroding Agnes making them take himself as the supreme master, and even a single thought can decide their life and death, even. Su Mu can clearly see the doubts and fears on the faces of these players. Not only do they retain their complete consciousness, but they also have leisure to whisper and discuss what the King of Bones is doing. He got seems to be some kind of permission. Just when Su Mu was also puzzled, the system prompt sounded in his mind again. Rule error. Recalculating. Calculation complete. What? You have obtained the permission to open the undead camp. As the founder of the undead camp, you are the only leader of the undead camp. You can invite descendants, that is, players, to join the undead camp by yourself. Or you can remove a descendant from the undead camp. Faction expulsion. You have turned on the skill transfer system, and you can transfer a certain skill that you have to the descendant. You have turned on the task editing system, and you can pay a certain price to drive the descendants to help you accomplish certain things. You invited 32 descendants to join the undead camp. Template error. In data calculation, the calculation is over. The relevant occupation template is missing. Arrived, failed to join the undead camp. You have opened the career template editing system. After you have completely created, remodeled, a relevant occupation template, that matches the descendant's job transfer. You can edit the occupation template, 
and grant it to the descendant accompanied by the system prompt sound in my mind a bunch of information is also refreshed from sumus attribute panel at the same time zero ask for flowers a lot of information related to these systems and modules also automatically emerged from his mind sumu was startled ecstatic he never imagined that when he completely eroded a player with his erosion talent what he gained was not the player's complete control, but open the undead camp. Undead camp, this is a faction that has never appeared in a previous life. The undead, in the definition of the game world, are monsters. Not to mention, second world, even in countless games before this, there has never been a monster camp that players can join. Of course, there are villains in the game. For example, the Dark Order Sumu learned from Argus. If the Dark Order still exists, a player has also obtained the favorability of a certain high-ranking member of the Order, or if certain conditions are met, they can join the Dark Order. At this point, the Dark Order can be counted as a faction, but in essence, the people who make up the Dark Order are still humans, and they are still part of the human camp, and even the living camp. And what about the undead camp? Not just a monster camp, but a monster camp exclusively for Sumu. Only he allows it. Players can join. As for the skill imparting system and task editing system that followed, this is not difficult to understand. A group of high-level NPCs in the game, as long as they can issue tasks and grant rewards to players, basically come with these two system modules. In comparison, the professional template editing system is more important to Sumu. Players can already join the undead camp. Only Su must permission is required. He doesn't even need to erode the player's soul again. In the operation just now, in fact, the 32 players who were completely eroded by him have already joined the undead camp. But he did not have a career template suitable for these players to transfer careers, which led to the failure of players to join. Skeletons, Liches, Ghosts, Death Knights. These four undead races are the oldest and most orthodox undead races of the undead family. There are many other undead races in the game world and almost all of them are based on these four types of undead. For example, a bone dragon is essentially a type of skeleton. Just because the legendary dragon is too powerful, even after death and sinking, the transformed skeleton dragon is far superior to the entire skeleton family. Therefore, it was classified separately and called bone dragon. The same goes for other undead. Sumu has many occupation templates of undead races, among them. The skeleton clan has the most types and the most perfect occupation templates. Since these career templates cannot allow players to change careers, it means that the career templates of the three major systems of Lich, Ghost and Death Knight cannot allow players to change careers. So, create, remodeling, unable to help. Sumu looked at his auxiliary skill that could reach level 2, Undead Transformation. Undead Transformation can transform various occupation templates owned by Undead but, this does not mean that Sumu can arbitrarily modify a career template. This kind of transformation not only requires a lot of time to study, but also requires a lot of knowledge based on the undead job template and the undead itself, but also needs to be carried out within the scope of the framework of the game rules. From Rogris, Sumu had already obtained the transformation system occupation template of the living corpse walking corpse zombie system, but only the living corpse occupation template was activated. Argus, the Lich King, has even developed a professional template for the stitching monster system and advanced it to an epic level. As for why, the job template of the zombie system he already has cannot allow players to change jobs and then officially join the undead camp. After thinking for a while, he noticed a word completely. After he has completely created or remodeled the relevant occupation templates that meet the transition of the descendants, he can edit these occupation templates and grant them to occupations. So, completely means that he completely grasps all the information of a professional template and can create it without resorting to his own particularity. For example, he activated all the occupation templates of the three ranks of the zombie system and deduced them to the level of the Lord rank. From the basic rank to the Lord rank, this should already be a complete system. For example, the Skull family. The upper limit of its orthodox occupation template is the Lord occupation template, for example, players. Most players will be trapped in the Lord, hero, rank throughout their lives past life. The first player to enter the hero rank should be three years after the game started, but until the return of the gods ten years later, most of the players still stay in the Lord rank, not only because of the huge amount of experience points that go to the back, but also because the vast majority of players simply cannot get the career templates of advanced epics and advanced legends. Career templates for players in the game world, apprentice occupation template, equipped by the system, all-inclusive. Each player can freely choose 
The official occupation template is also equipped by the system. It is just an upgraded version of the apprentice occupation template. Even a player born in the wild who has never had contact with NPCs can get it. The elite occupation template, starting from the occupation template of this rank, is not equipped by the system. Players need to enter the academies created by NPCs or follow high-level NPCs, and only after meeting certain conditions or learning the corresponding skills can they change jobs. From this stage, players are no longer players outside the game world, but must integrate into the game world and truly become a part of this vast and boundless game world. The mentor career template is still traceable, such as the tutors of those vocational colleges, such as middle-level officers in the armies of various countries, such as the backbone of the Aboriginal Adventurer team, and so on. At this time, players will not only integrate into this world, but start another life in this world. In reality, a player may be just a homeless person, but in this game world, he may be a highly respected professional mentor in a vocational academy. He may also be an officer patrolling the wilderness with hundreds of subordinates, and more it may be the leader of an adventure group, whose mission is to slay monsters. It is also from this stage that the name of the game, Second World, this, will become worthy of its name. It has really become the second world for every player, and also opens a second life for every player. Compared with this bizarre and vast world, the boring and uninteresting real world is more like a dimension the giant pod to keep them alive. Hero class template, whether in a small country like the Duchy of Ruhr or a continental overlord like the Caesar Empire, players who have entered the heroic rank, have already entered the ranks of nobles, even in the most powerful Caesar empire on this continent. A hero professional is enough to become the lord of a small town, to become the top of an army, or to form a huge team of adventurers. From the mentor level to the hero level, players not only have to complete the advanced tasks, but also need to undergo severe tests. Only players who have been tested can step into this rank, and jump from the ruled to the ruler, even if only the original ruler. Why do you say that the hero rank is the end point for most players? Because the system does not provide transfer information for epic occupations, and even related clues are not provided. If you want to step from the hero level to the epic level, or be favored by epic heroes, or legendary heroes in the game world, and become their apprentices or disciples, and when the conditions are met, epic heroes and legendary heroes will naturally give them the opportunity to transfer, or make a huge contribution in a country with at least an epic occupation heritage, be rewarded by the king of this country, give relevant occupation information, and then change careers, or just like Suma's previous life, he frantically explores various historical sites and relics, discovers lost inheritances, and then obtains relevant career information, and transfers to advanced levels. There is a lot of lost heritage in the game world, but it is also relatively speaking. Unless you are lucky, or spend a lot of time looking up ancient books, looking for that poor clue from the vast sea of books, and then finding the lost inheritance. Either way, for ordinary players, hero rank is their upper limit. They can change from a level 60 hero professional to a level 61 hero professional, but it is basically impossible to change from a level 60 hero professional to a level 61 epic hero. Some people may say that this is too unfair but this is not a simple game, but a real Guangyuan world composed of countless main material continents, planes, and half-planes. At best, this real world has been digitized. Is the real world fair? It is the greatest fairness for players in this game world to allow players to be on the same starting line in the three stages of the mortal stage, the apprentice stage, and the official stage. As everyone knows, for the aborigines in the game world, and the NPCs in the eyes of the players, this simplest fairness is an extravagant hope. For the first three stages, the system has been given. In the later stage, it depends entirely on the player's personal ability and chance above. From the basic rank to the lord position, it can basically be regarded as a complete occupation system. The birth of any occupational template requires a lot of time and energy to study, and all kinds of knowledge need to be familiar with and mastered. And Sumu, with the existence of free points, he can omit the previous part. But just think about it, and know that he needs to invest hundreds of free points in this area to really build the whole system to zero. Only by establishing a complete professional system can he truly open the undead camp and allow players to join this exclusive camp that only belongs to him. But the benefits are also huge. 1. He has a group of immortal men with great growth potential. When you have no time to clone yourself or encounter some special events, you can drive those players who have joined the undead camp to take action in the form of tasks. 2. This is a batch of extra sturdy non-vegetables. Slaughtering players. Even if you can let your little brother take action, 
the experience value you will get is a very small part after all. What if the player joins the undead faction? Just selling the skills he has collected at the cost of experience points is equivalent to giving him a stable and extremely huge source of experience points. This way of harvesting, it is much safer and simpler to slaughter the entire main material world than to set off the undead natural disaster, pity. After digesting all the information and sorting out his thoughts, Sumu looked at those players with regret. He opened the undead camp, but it will take a long time to truly transform players into their own power. At least, he can start the creation of the undead camp only when he has obtained enough free points, when he has advanced his strength to the peak of the current stage, and has a large amount of free points remaining. Now, if Suma's mood at this time is a surprise with regret, the mood of those players who have been corroded by demonic energy is complicated, from fear at the beginning, to curiosity later, then to the shock and ecstasy when the system prompts sounded, and finally to the loss and puzzlement now. The moods of these 32 players experienced a roller coaster like drastic change in just 10 minutes. What? Sumu, the King of Bones, invited you to join the undead camp. Do you want to join? This is the system prompt that these 32 players received when Sumu opened the undead camp. When the system prompts sounded, some players were stunned, while others were full of ecstasy and couldn't wait to choose to agree. Undead Faction 5.5, a faction never heard of. They are opening a hidden plot, not to mention the power of Sumu, the Ghost Dragon and the Death Knight. Just opening the hidden plot makes all players ecstatic, because every gamer who has played the game knows that the hidden plot means extremely rich award and. There are too many players in the human camp, and the occupations they come into contact with are the same. Compared with these ordinary occupations and ordinary races, the undead family is so handsome, only, before they could wake up from this ecstasy, a new system prompt sounded in their minds again, you have joined the undead camp, for special reasons, you have withdrawn from the undead camp, your body is being eroded, your health is zero, you are dead, the result is, Sumu successfully completed his series of trials, and after the 32 players experienced a roller coaster like mental journey, they appeared on the game Logan interface with a collapsed face in front of them. Only one line of blood colored writing emerges your character is dead. Thank you for watching Mystic Realms Recap. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.